Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You doing well this afternoon? All right, looks good. It's, I know it's noon hour. Waiting for some lunch. Need that energy boost. All right, well, I'm meteorologist Chris Martinez, and this should be called Chris's Angels, right? Because I've got me and these beautiful new meteorologists. So let me uh, hand over the mic so they can introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Taylor Grenda. Uh, I've been here at the station for about a year. You've probably seen me anywhere from mornings to evenings. And um, I'm going to give you a little bit of the information that's recently been updated for this year coming up in just a few minutes. Here's Vanessa. Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Vanessa Vina. Um, I've been here since August, I'm the newest meteorologist and you can find me in the weekend morning at 5 in the morning and I'm going to be talking about the weather apps and the hurricane tracker in a little bit also. <laughs> you see they're all trained well. We'll see you right after the break, right? <laughs> all right, let's kick things off with the numbers. I know everyone wants to know what we're going to see, what's the forecast and we get, we'll get into talk about why we shouldn't pay attention to these numbers. But here's the official forecast from NOAA, the National Hurricane Center, whatever you want to call them. For this year, they're calling for six to 11 named storms. That's named storms, tropical systems, depressions, storms, hurricanes. And out of those six to 11 named storms, they're expecting anywhere between three to six to be hurricanes. And you can see the average is six, so you're saying, okay, below an average, so not expect, we're expecting a quiet season. And out of those three to six hurricanes, major hurricanes are category three or above. The forecast is for zero to two, which is well below the three on average. So again, you look at these numbers and say, hey, well, it looks like a below average season, right? Good news. Yes? Keep them away. <laughs> but We'll talk about why the season is expected to be below normal, but why that doesn't mean always good news for South Florida. All right, you've heard about this, right? El Nino, La Nina. Well, El Nino, basically the warming of the Pacific waters out there off the coast of California. It creates a lot of upper level wind shear. Wind shear, big fancy term for upper level winds that are going to shear a storm apart. Where do the storms usually develop this time of year? In the Atlantic, right? The Gulf of Mexico. And they move from east to west. Well, if you have the upper level winds that move from west to east, it's going to kind of inhibit that development. So El Nino is a good thing for a quiet hurricane season. Also, we watch for cooler than normal water temperatures in the Atlantic. What does a hurricane eat? What does it eat? Raise your hands. What does it eat? What is it? Yes, sir. Warm water. It's got to be at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That's the fuel for the fire to get these uh, hurricanes to develop. So what we're looking at this year, it looks like the Atlantic Basin is slightly cooler than normal. So we kind of lack that intensity, that energy to feed the storms. So that also in turn helps keep the season forecast low. Does that make sense? All right, cool. I know you've heard this some time, and I hate to say it over and over again, but we're going to say it again. It only takes one. It only takes one storm to ruin lives, to, to up in your communities and stuff like that. And what I do want to focus on is devastating hurricanes can still hit us during El Nino years. So with that being said, let me take you back to 1992. Who remembers 1992? You remember Andrew, right? Big Cat 5 that developed and moved over Miami-Dade and basically created this type of damage. This is in Hopestead in South Miami-Dade. Just a wall of wind, 160 mile per hour winds just walloped that area. In fact, Vanessa was there living uh, when Andrew uh, moved through and also in Wilma and saw this type of damage come on shore. That was in an El Nino year back in 1992. Also, Let's take it closer to home. Francis, Jean, 2004, right here, Martin and St. Lucie counties. Y'all remember that? Yeah, they moved over the same path as you just saw as the computer's freaking out. They basically moved over Martin and St. Lucie counties and caused a lot of damage. But what I do want to point out, those two hurricanes yet again happened during an El Nino year back in 2004. So. I don't want you to pay too much about the numbers. I don't want you to say, hey, we're expecting a below average season. The message that I'm trying to point out is 
We need to start preparing now. We don't need to be complacent because we have been complacent. It's been a while, almost a decade, since we've seen something hit our area. And these are a couple of pictures from Jean and Francis right here across the Treasure Coast uh, back in 2004. So I went to a couple of hurricane conferences, and they did some data. They did some surveys and said 70% of coastal residents don't truly know what this is. What do you think it is? What is 70% of... Treasure Coast residents don't know what this is. Raise your hands. Anybody know? Anyone take a guess? What was that? Evacuation. Right. And on top of that, 70% of you folks, according to the survey, don't truly know what storm surge is as well. Well, Thank, thanks, thanks for our little handy dandy weather computer. We've got great tools these days. Here's what storm surge is. When you got a spinning storm right off the coast, it pushes wall after wall of fresh water and that backs up the bays, that backs up the intracoastal, that creates tons of flooding. And you said yourself that 70% of you also don't know where your evacuation zone is. So this is the number one killer when it comes to talking about hurricanes and moving forward. So we've got to really pay attention and focus our attention on storm surge. So with that being said, National Hurricane Center said this is a big deal. We need to find new developments. How can we help the folks out across Florida, right along the East Coast? Well, new this year, they had it operational. New this year, they've come up with these storm surge inundation maps. So what does this mean to you? Well, basically, using Fort Myers, Sanibel Island, and that area, southwestern coast of Florida, basically they came up with this model, so to speak. So when there's a hurricane headed your way, they're gonna issue this map and show you the potential for storm surge flooding down to your street level. So basically what this means is, you see this key right here, blue showing up to three feet of water above ground level, yellow showing three feet to six feet, orange showing six to nine feet, and red showing above nine feet. So basically, they'll issue this map and show you what the potential of storm surge is down to your street level to give you a better idea if you need to evacuate or not. This is a great tool. They used it operational last year. They are debuting this new tool come this year, and it's just going to be a helpful tool because you can actually show, if you actually live near Cape Coral, say, hey, a cat one was heading your way, oh, you can expect anywhere between two to three feet of storm surge in and around your area. So this is coming out new for y'all to, to be helpful when it comes to this hurricane season. Also, we tend to forget about these. It's rain, it's, you know, a hurricane comes on shore. It's a lot of rain, it's a lot of wind, but tornadoes are definitely a hidden danger when it comes to hurricanes. They are usually rain wrapped, you can't see them, um, and can cause EF0 to EF1 type damage. That's winds in excess of 65 miles per hour. And I don't know about you, we've got tons of palm trees here across the area, and it takes as little as 40, 45 mile per hour winds to knock those palm trees down. So these quick little movers will do some damage inside the hurricane on top of the hurricane type of uh, damage as well. So here's just a cool little fancy uh, graphic that I made showing you that any kind we have a land falling hurricane, we get the natural rotation with the storms, that moves inland, we get the friction, and that's how those tornadoes form. So you gotta watch out for storm surge moving forward and also the potential for tornadoes when we uh, talk about hurricanes making landfall. Tons of new stuff. We talked about the storm surge maps uh, moving forward. Taylor's going to talk about what's new this year from the Hurricane Center that will help you out. Thanks, Chris. And going off of storm surge, what Chris was just talking about, new out of the National Hurricane Center for this year are the watches and warnings for storm surge. So as the storm is approaching, if you live in any kind of area that is prone to storm surge or they're expecting to see some storm surge from uh, the hurricane, they can now issue a uh, watch or a warning for your area. So this will actually give you, if you live in any kind of these areas, a little bit more time in advance to know if you need to evacuate, how to get your house prepared, and also how much time you have before you will start to see the effects of this and how far inland you will start to see the storm surge uh, head in. So also in addition to this, we also have a five-day outlook, which in previous years, uh, this was just written in a text. Now they have a graphical outlook of what you can expect if a storm is starting to brew in the tropics and we have different colors denoting the percentage or a high, medium, or uh, 
a low, medium, or a high percentage of uh, a tropical cyclone to form. So yellow, that is actually closer to the Gulf of Mexico, that is a low chance of any kind of tropical development to um, form. And then there's also orange, which denotes a 40 to 60 percent chance that we're going to see any kind of storm uh, form from the uh, what is brewing in that area, and then also the red, which is high, and you can see it goes a little bit further out, and that gives you a little bit more time in advance to know if uh, that tropical wave where the X is is going to move closer to your area and how uh, high of a chance it is that it will form into a potential tropical storm or a hurricane. Also, we also have the cone of uncertainty for this year, which is a little bit more narrow, which shows that it's going to be more accurate for this year. It goes for anywhere from one day to five days, and it's based on historical events in the past five years, where the center of the storm, uh, due to those um, in past years, where the center of the storm for those exact storms has uh, actually moved to. So this actually gives you uh, a little bit more time to know uh, where the storm is going to head, and, uh, and I guess, uh, do you have any more things to add on this? No, basically, uh, so this is six, uh, the green side is the, uh, back six years ago, so 2009, and what basically happens is computer models and other information, hurricane hunters, all that data shows you how much improved the forecasts are going forward uh, this hurricane season. So you can see what it used to be on the outside, which is this green, it covers a whole lot more landmass than this red cone of uncertainty. So we've become uh, technologically advanced. We've got a lot of data and a lot of studies that can give us a better and more accurate forecast moving forward this hurricane season. So that's also great news coming from the uh, Hurricane Center as well. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'm going to be talking about downloading the Hurricane app and also the weather app. So it's a good idea to actually download these apps on your mobile devices. It's actually for free, so that is the good news. And you only have, the only thing you have to do is actually just search WPBF on the search bar, and it's for free on iTunes and Google Play. So basically, Let's talk about what includes on the hurricane tracker. It lets you track and monitor hurricanes and tropical storms, and it shows the latest maps, the forecast, and if you're in the storm path, you can actually look if you're the, you can see the computer models and the track of the storms. And also, it has a list of local shelters, emergency numbers, and um, evacuation zone. So if you're in, you know, in the coast, you can actually look for the evacuation, um, a list of evacuation zones in that app. Also, um, the hurricane guide is actually in the app and on the website on WPBF slash weather. Um, so let's talk about also the weather app. It's actually a good weather app and that shows a lot of stuff in it. So it's a good idea to stay connected on the go. You can download it for free and all you have to do is you know, type in the WPBF weather and it'll show up on the, on the Apple Store or Google Play. So it, de it depends on what phone you have. It actually is, uh, it works for all the mobile devices including the iPhones, the, the Android and the iPad as well. So the app includes the latest forecast, severe weather it watches and warning, so it warns you, and also it detects lightning around your area, and, the, and it shows the live radar. Now the good thing about the interactive radar is that you could zoom into your area, your current location, or your, even your house to check if there's a storm nearby or if there's showers nearby. You could track these storms. Also, there's a little button. It says past and future cast. You could actually look at the future cast to show what is the chances of rain or, you know, in the next several hours, okay? And also, I think that's basically it. Also, the weather videos, you can see our weather, uh, weather videos that were uploaded during the morning, the afternoon, and also the evening hours of the forecast. So it keeps you updated on the go all day. If you missed the news this morning, you can actually look at the weather videos that was uploaded this morning, and it just shows you what the weather will be like throughout the day, so you can plan ahead of time. So it's a good idea to actually download these apps, and it's actually for free. Yep. Yep. And that is the good news, and on top of that, we lose power sometimes. So what are we going to have? 
our cell phones. Keep them charged up during times of severe weather because if you have these apps, you can still watch us on TV. You can still get the word out. You can still get the warnings right on your cell phone. So those apps, if you have some time and you do have a smartphone, go ahead and download them. They're all for free, as Vanessa said. So kind of just to put this and wrap it up with a bow, we talked about the outlook. We talked about what we need to really watch out for this upcoming hurricane season, the storm surge, the tornadoes, and stuff like that. I was just at the hurricane conference up in Orlando, had a chance to talk with the hurricane experts, the guy who actually does the forecast. It was Dr. Gray, but now it's his understudy because Dr. Gray rather play golf these days. <laughs> who blames him, right? But Phil Klotzbach talked to him. But had a chance to talk with a friend of mine who's Rick Nabb from the uh, Hurricane Center. He's the director. You may have seen him on the Weather Channel. He was on the Weather Channel. And he has a message for you, especially living right across the Treasure Coast. What I'm thinking about as I head into this hurricane season, I'm not too concerned about how many years it's been since the last hurricane. I'm not too concerned about what the seasonal forecast says. I'm not too concerned about what El Nino may or may not do. What I'm thinking about on a personal family and homeownership perspective is I'm thinking about hurricane preparations in four categories and these are really important evacuation planning buying supplies updating your insurance including flood and strengthening your home so kind of just a poignant statement from him because we used to be I mean I, I as a meteorologist and who studies hurricanes used to be all about the numbers and the forecasts and oh my goodness like you know when June 1st comes around and we're all giddy <laughs> but it's not about the numbers it's about being prepared now because we've been so complacent living here with no direct hit or effect for the past nine to ten years so again what to reiterate what he said Focus on evacuation planning. Need to know where you're in a, if you're in an evacuation zone. Buy supplies now. You don't want to be in the line at Home Depot right before a storm hits. You'll be sitting there for hours. You're in the traffic. So start to slowly but surely buy supplies for the hurricane uh, season. Also update your insurance and strengthen your home. Those are the four things that uh, Dr. Nab prepares or wants us to do. Uh, to do now in, pre in preparation for the hurricane season. So that wraps up our cool little talk. Anybody have any questions moving forward? All right. Thank you guys for stopping by. All right.